In this lesson, we'll be doing a quick exposure review. In photography, the term exposure is the act of taking a single photo. Essentially, this is the recording and storage of a certain quantity of light. Exposure is a somewhat subjective thing. You may look at a dark photo and think that it is underexposed, but this may be exactly what the photographer intended to capture for a certain mood or feel. You might think of it like this. If a photo captures enough light to show the detail of the subject, it's a good exposure. If the image is too dark or too bright, you will lose information and detail. This is because the amount of light information a camera can capture is limited by something called dynamic range. Dynamic range is the difference between the lightest and the darkest areas in a scene that your camera can record. Areas that are too bright and too dark fall outside this range and are clipped. Clipped means that those areas are recorded as the brightest value, which is white, for areas that are too bright, or the darkest value, which is black, for the areas that are too dark. Most of the time, this is only a problem when the sun is involved. If you are shooting indoors, the difference between the brightest and the darkest areas is a lot less than when you're shooting outside. Again, exposure is all about recording a quantity of light that captures the detail of your subject and scene. This quantity of light is controlled by three things. Aperture, shutter speed or exposure time, and ISO. Aperture is a hole or opening through which light travels. In photography lenses, the aperture is usually specified as an F number, and a lens typically has a marked set of F stops that the F number can be set to. A lower F number is a larger opening, and a higher F number is a smaller opening. The larger opening lets in more light, and the smaller opening lets in less light. The photography term 1F stop corresponds to a light intensity change factor of two. For example, if we set a lens to f4, we will get a certain amount of light that enters our camera. If we change the lens to f2.8, we have effectively doubled the amount of light we are allowing to reach the image sensor. If we change this to f2, we are doubling the amount of light again. Compared to when we first had the lens set to f4, we are now letting in four times as much light. The largest f-stop a lens can be set to is called its maximum aperture. This will vary from lens to lens. Generally, more expensive lenses have a larger maximum aperture. The second element in exposure is shutter speed or exposure time. Shutter speed or exposure time is the length of time a camera shutter is open when taking a photo. The amount of light that reaches the image sensor is proportional to the exposure time. So an exposure time of two seconds would be twice the amount of light as an exposure time of one second. There are two terms here shutter speed and exposure time. Shutter speed refers to a camera with a physical shutter, like a DSLR. The shutter sits in front of the camera's imager and blocks the light. When you take a photo, the shutter opens, revealing the image sensor and starting the exposure. Then a period of time goes by and it closes, covering the image sensor, blocking the light, and stopping the exposure. Many smaller cameras do not have a shutter, and these work in a slightly different way. The image sensor is exposed to light all of the time, and this is actually how you preview the image. You are looking at a screen that is showing you exactly what your sensor is seeing. When you take a photo, your camera reads and records the information for a period of time. This period of time that your camera is reading and recording the information from the sensor is the exposure time. Both the shutter speed and exposure time are dealing with a period of time that your camera sensor reads and records the information. These two terms mean the same thing. So if I say exposure time, you can assume that I'm talking about shutter speed as well. The shutter speed or exposure time are in minutes, seconds, and fractions of a second. Most of the time, this will be fractions of a second. For example, a 1 100th exposure time would be 1 100th of a second long. A 1 200th exposure time would be half as long and thus allow half as much light to hit the image sensor. The last thing that affects exposure is ISO or image sensor sensitivity. ISO is the equivalent to the old ASA scale or the newer ANSI scale which dealt with film sensitivities. An ISO of 800 on your digital camera 
is equivalent to an ASA 800 film speed. ISO in digital cameras refers to a rating of your camera's image sensor sensitivity. A higher ISO setting makes your sensor more sensitive to light, meaning that you can take photos in darker conditions without the need to use a flash or tripod. A typical digital camera will have ISO values of 100, 200, 800, and 1600 as a minimum. The higher the number, the more sensitive the camera is to light. These values are relative to one another, so ISO 200 is twice as sensitive as ISO 100, and ISO 800 is four times as sensitive as 200, and so on. When you have shutter speed and aperture values that cannot change, the only way to increase exposure without adding light is to turn up the ISO value. So how do you set the values for aperture, shutter speed, and ISO so that you get a proper exposure? To do this, you need a way of measuring the light and interpreting the values into useful information. Thankfully, this is easy because your camera has a light meter that will do most of the work for you. There are usually a few ways to measure and interpret the light, and these are called metering modes. Evaluative metering. This is the default on most cameras and usually the default for automatic shooting modes. This is a general purpose metering mode that works well for directly lit and backlit situations. Center weighted average mode measures the light across the whole frame but strongly biases the center of the viewfinder area. Center weighted metering is a good mode to select when you want to capture a brightly lit subject and be sure it's exposed correctly compared with the surrounding area. Partial metering mode. This measures a small circular area that covers around 10% of the viewfinder area at the center. If the surrounding area is darker or lighter than the main subject, this mode is a good choice. It will usually give you the correct exposure for your subject, as long as your subject isn't very light or very dark. Spot metering mode. This measures a small circular area in the center of the viewfinder that covers about 2-4% to 4 of the picture area. When you have a select area of a picture that you want to precisely meter and don't want the other areas of the scene to affect your exposure, this is the mode you want to use. This can be a bit challenging to use because you really have to pay attention to exactly what you are metering and do a little interpretation for yourself. With a basic understanding of these metering modes, we can interpret what our camera is telling us and use this information to set aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. These exposure elements, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, are referred to as the exposure triangle. If we change a value, like aperture, we have to change at least one of the other elements in order to maintain the same exposure. Here's a quick example. All right, here's an example of this exposure triangle. You're looking at the back of my Canon 7D, and in front of here I have a little scene set up. You can see a little bit on the monitor here. And this has just basically some photo junk sitting on a case, and it has a constant light source here. And what we're going to look at is the exposure triangle, how all of these three elements relate, and what happens to them when we change one of them, and what we need to do to compensate for that and how everything all plays together. Now, right now we're looking at live view, but I'm going to take it out of live view. And every camera is going to be a little bit different, but if you have a DSLR, it's going to be pretty similar to this here. So let me just take you through what we have. We have shutter speed, you can see there, one tenth of a second. We have aperture set at 5.6. ISO is set to auto, but we can set that just to 100 for now. We're not using a flash. I have manual point selection, it's on faithful color setting, the white balance is set to tungsten. It was on center weighted average, now I put it to evaluative metering. I'm also going to set the drive mode to single shot. It's also in manual focus mode so that we don't have focusing issues here. So if I half press the shutter button, this little meter right here is going to tell us what the camera is seeing based on what it's seeing. It's interpreting all of the light here and I specifically set this up so that there's a very hot spot of light that's just hitting this big lens here and everything else is pretty much dark so that may present a problem and that's something that we're going to look at. So right now it's set to evaluative metering and you can see with these settings it's showing us that I'm about one in two-thirds stops underexposed. So if I take a photo just like this you can see that most of the photo is dark and then it looks like 
there's a spot that's way overblown right here. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot of information there. And that's because all the metering modes, what they want to do is they want to make the scene 18% gray because visually that's basically what our eyes tell us is halfway in between white and black. And so basically it's shooting right for the middle. And so based on our metering mode right now, this is telling us that that was one and two thirds stops underexposed. And you can see that most of the scene does look dark except for this crazy bright spot right in the middle here. So what we can do is if we wanna change this, we need to change one of the parameters, one of our exposure elements. So because we're shooting still life here, we could take our shutter speed and make it slower. So we were at one tenth of a second. Now we're at one sixth of a second, third of a second right now. And now this is telling you, so you can see as I half press the shutter button, that now the meter is saying that this is properly exposed. So if we take a, a quick shot here, you can see, yeah, we can see more of the scene because the shutter speed is so slow. I'm gonna take the drive mode and I'm gonna set it to two seconds. And that way I can press the shutter, let go, let it take the shot and we won't see any vibrations. And so you can see that this photo is much more balanced. We're not getting mostly dark in one hotspot. If we want to increase the shutter speed, so let's set this back to, let's say, one one hundredth of a second. Now, when we press the shutter speed, we're seeing we're more than three stops underexposed. So what that means is we change one of the elements in our exposure triangle, which is, those are all up here. We have shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. So now what we need to do in order to get the same exposure as our last shot, we need to change either our aperture or our ISO or both. So let's jump over to ISO and let's crank this up at least three times. So 200 would be one, 400 would be two, 800 would be three. And now we can see we're two stops underexposed. So now we're gonna to need to go to 1600 and 3200 and that's gonna get us right there. So now if we take another shot, you can see that this photo and the one before look essentially the same. There's a slight variance, but overall they're almost identical. So that's how you can compensate and that's how the exposure triangle works. When we make an adjustment to one of the parameters in our exposure triangle, we need to compensate in order to get the same exposure, in order to bring up or bring down the exposure. So for example, if we left it at 3200, or let's bring it down to something more reasonable, let's say 800, that's pretty reasonable. And now we take our shutter speed and we roll this way down to one eighth. Now it's gonna tell us, based on the evaluative metering, that we are one and two thirds stops overexposed. So if we wanted to leave ISO at 800, and shutter speed of one eighth of a second, what we'd have to do is we'd have to increase the aperture, or actually decrease it. We'd have to increase the number and decrease the size to let in less light. So now when we take the photo, you can see that this photo and the one before are almost identical. Now, if we didn't want to make such a drastic change here, we were at five, six, we could go to, let's say F8, and then we can increase our shutter speed to one thirteenth. So we can alter two parameters to get the exposure in check. And we can see that that is going to look very similar to the other photos that we looked at before. Using metering modes combined with shooting modes like Aperture priority, shutter priority, and manual will give you a great place to start when setting exposure values. The trick is balancing the exposure triangle with the side effects of each exposure element. Each exposure element has a side effect. Shutter speed and motion, aperture and depth of field, and ISO and noise. In the next few lessons, we are going to look at each one of these in more detail, starting with ISO and noise.